seven minutes is not very long to talk. So very quickly, I've tried to, I've tried to guard, guard, guide my words towards the most important things I want to share today. If you're just now getting involved with Agile, you're in a very, very good place because you're standing on the shoulders of a, you know, the last 13 to 15 years. First there was XP, Extreme Programming, and then along comes Scrum and Lean Manufacturing. There's a lot of good things that we can learn from those who've gone before us. Okay, I started my uh, Agile experience in 1996 at Chrysler. Okay, when the first C3 project, I wasn't on that project, but I was doing a data warehousing project at the time. I believe we have a tremendous opportunity in this, uh, for this time uh, uh, in, in history to really to capitalize on, so I'm going the wrong way. Here we go. So are you ready? I'm ready. If we fail to embrace the opportunities of change offered today, come on. I think we're going to continue to fail as an IT community. So now is the time to embrace this change. I really believe that. I've been, I've been living in the state of Michigan for 25 years as a taxpayer in the state of Michigan. I'm very, very excited to find out that the state of Michigan is, is getting involved with Agile. I've been hammering on their door for the last five years doing missionary work, Say, please do an Agile project. And uh, I'm glad that John is stepping up to the plate and leading out uh, with the first Agile project in the state of Michigan. So I'm excited to hear what he's going to say. Um, okay. So the other thing I want to say is just because you have an Agile project inside of an organization doesn't mean Agile is going to take root. Let me tell you why I believe that to be. I'm going to skip this vision. This is, all, this is all true. Dramatic improvement in on time and on budget delivery of services, overall budget reductions. These are things that are true. We just did a project for a large publishing company um, in Farmington Hills. The project was supposed to take 18 months. We did it in 14 weeks. Okay, 14 weeks from start to finish. From the first time we sat down with the customer until it's in production at a trade show this past weekend, 14 weeks. So these things are possible. When you have empowered individuals who know how to write code really well, you do test-driven development, continuous integration, the business is in the room with you writing code, you can do a tremendous amount of things in short periods of time. That's what I want to see that model replicate itself over all of your businesses. Okay? And I'm glad the state of Michigan is doing it. I know Delta Dental is still doing it. Brad Ross is going to be telling you about, about some stuff here very shortly, what he's been up to. Um, we want software to be soft. Software historically has become very crunchy, very, very hard to maintain over time. If you write a test harness and you have the freedom of change to refactor the code as you go through that time, you will have success with creating soft software. You're going to have a delighted customer. You know, quite honestly, you know, that's all we do at Pillar is agile projects. And I've just been word of mouth. When I have a delighted customer, that customer becomes my sales force. I didn't have any salespeople for the first 10 years of my business. All I wanted to do is go out and serve my clients, do great work, and then they, you know, they sell for me. Right? Yeah. So I appreciate that. So here's some failure patterns of things that I've seen happen. Um, it can't just be bottom up. It can't be top down. It can't just be Brenda Laird saying, you will do this. Because that's, that's, not, that's not what she did, right? It, it became a bottom up uh, venture at Delta Dental. Okay, but over time, it's actually taken root for both the top down and the bottom up. A lot of times we have these corporate antibodies. If you have a successful group of people, somebody's going to try to kill them because they don't want to, they don't want to make you look bad. So that, that does happen. When you have this one team that's producing, you know, 300% better improvement than the other team, they're going to try to cut your legs up from underneath you. Another thing you, I don't want you to do is skip, skip school. We believe in an abundance mentality. I would be glad to train as many people as I can. This we're big in mentoring education. I, I want people to be successful. I want my competitors to be successful. I want my partners, I want my customers to be successful as they embrace Agile. Okay, let's look at some success patterns. So it has to be inside, outside, upside down. You know, I'm embarrassed to say that GM had this, Chrysler had it, but yet they went out of business. So why did they go out of business? It's because just because we have the de departmental success, the overall organization didn't embrace it. Okay, ultimately, if you can't change the entire organization and they don't embrace it, 
you're going to have a momentary success followed by, you know, who knows if you're going to embrace it or not. If you're not, if the CEO and the president of your organization doesn't embrace this, then it's a radical cultural change that we're talking about. This is not a methodology. It's an approach. It's a passion. It's a right way of doing things. Okay, so the business has to buy into it. We have to be accountable. We have to be accountable for our actions on a daily basis. So we do these daily stand-ups or daily scrums. What did you do yesterday? What are you going to do today? Where are you blocked? In a traditional world, we are so self-conscious, self-centered. We're, we're, we're as human beings, we don't want to expose that we don't know everything. You won't know everything. But guess what? If you can come alongside another individual, do some pair programming for a few hours. You can solve those problems. Don't sit at your cubicle and try to think the problem's going to go away. So that you know brings up a point. We took, Brad and I were talking collective code ownership, continuous integration of code every day. Write your test first, then write your code. Uh, team transparency. The business has to buy into it. And guess what? We have built up a legacy of mistrust between the business community and the IT community. It's not going to happen overnight. But you have one success with that business, and they begin to trust you again. Okay? It all comes down to trust. If you deliver on your promises, we believe in delivering projects on time, on budget, with the scope that we promised. So when I started that project, it was a $500,000 project in 14 weeks. Every week I had the customer in the room saying, hey, are we on the right track? And they're walking alongside me saying, yeah, we're on track, we're not on track. That's the type of intentional focus and buy-in that you have to have if you're going to be successful. The other thing I want to point out today is that we have, I'm not going to cover all these points. I could talk for hours on this. I'm passionate about it. I believe in it. Again, I'm, I'm driving a lot of business across the country with 100 people in my company. A lot of success. But one of the things we do is agile readiness, readiness assessment. If you want to know if your organization is ready to adopt agile, this is a, this is a, uh, a half-day session I want to put you through. And again, I'm going to give out $99 vouchers if you, if you want. Forgive me for being salesy. I'm not a sales guy, but yet I'm a technologist, and I'm trying to be as helpful as I can. Jim Niffin's in the room today, uh, one of my sales guys. Jay Ajo's in the room. Jay, where are you? Up in the, on the top. So if you guys want to talk afterwards, you can't get to me, those guys will be able to help you out. But these are the areas where you really need to assess whether or not you, uh, you're going to be ready as an organization, your technical readiness, your team culture, uh, your skill sets uh, overall, your throughput assessment, your programming practices, test automation, continuous integration strategies, are you ready for test-driven development. And again, we rate you on a scale of a minus four to a plus four, depending on whether or not you are ready. <coughs> we can implement this on a team basis, on a departmental basis. Very, very important. Am I still? Yeah. Am I done? Yeah. Why didn't you say something? <laughs> All right, I'll move on. Come on up, Sir, Mr. Sir Khan. Josh. <laughs>